If you have friends which haven't seen Haikyuu, then you'll likely know the pain of trying to explain to them why some of Haikyuu's best scenes are so good. You and I know how hype, moving, and in some cases, life-changing this series' best scenes can be, but trying to explain to someone why a single receive, block, or spike is so incredibly moving is kind of hard to do. But there's one scene in particular that on my latest rewatch really stood out to me. Somehow, without a single thing happening, just a bit of camera movement and a single line, we get a scene that turned one of the most overlooked characters in the series into one of the greatest of all time. Tadashi Yamaguchi and his success in fighting back against an all too relatable feeling. For the first three episodes of Haikyuu, he doesn't really feel like too much more than Tsukushima's sidekick. He even initially brags about Tsukushima's height, seemingly in absence of something to brag about himself. With everything else going on, and the focus really being on the other characters, he kinda slips under the radar a bit for the first half of season one. And I didn't really think much of him as a result. But there's a scene in episode 14 where he gets his first setup of something down the line, his conversation with Shimada, in which he walks in despite the shop being closed and asked him to teach him how to do a jump float serve because he never wants to be the only first year on the bench the whole game again. Maybe this won't make sense to some people, but to feel as though you're good enough, that you're not a failure and you can do the same things as everyone else is a blessing you only really appreciate if you used to not feel that way. And it's also something that absolutely consumes you when you feel as though you're not enough, that you can't do anything right. You can't do the same things as everyone else. Like there's this curse or barrier that just seems to stop you again and again. It's something I so desperately wanted when I was younger yet, saw so many people around me taking it for granted. I don't know how many people will be able to relate to that, but I'm sure we can all at least relate to that frustration of wanting to be better. And the timid, shy Yamaguchi going out of his way to seek out Shimada really says so much about him. And he earned a ton of respect for me in the scene because it would have been all too easy for him to just kind of resign himself to the sidelines to say, well, it's rare for first years to play. It's just Hinata, Kagyo, and Tsukushima, all exceptional in some way. Next year, I'll be on the team. There wouldn't have been this risk of embarrassment or failure. It would have likely been a very comforting thing to tell himself. And that's the option I took myself for so long. But not only does Yamaguchi actively seek out a way to get what he wants, he goes for being a pinch server. The only play where you're not just standing side by side with your team as equals, you're carrying all the expectations on your back. It really is so admirable. I have a ton of respect for his resolve and initiative. A ton to admit, hey, I'm weak right now and I'll do whatever I can to change that. Can you help me? And so Yamaguchi starts practicing alone at night in a cold, dark parking lot in the hope of that one moment where it all changes for him. Soon enough, Karasno enters their first regional qualifier and of course, eventually end up against their biggest rivals, Alba Josai. Jumping ahead to the third set, the momentum is building and building against Karasuno. Oikawa's tactics are breaking them down point by point, and the focus of the game is on the two genius setters going against each other at a level way beyond anyone else on that court. Desperate to find a way to shift the momentum back, Coach Ukai does something completely unexpected to everyone. Even Yamaguchi's mentor, Shimada. He subs the terrified, shaking Yamaguchi in, and as he steps on the court, he's shocked by how different it is. The intensity and heat of the court gives a very cold reminder. Unfortunately, no matter how much you hype yourself up and play things out in your mind, the second you're confronted with whatever it is you are dreading, your body is going to tense up. You're going to feel nervous and wish you were literally anywhere else. And you've got to be prepared for that. As Yamaguchi tries to calm his nerves, desperate for his one chance to prove himself, to work out, he shakily sends his jump float serve towards Alba Josai, only for it to not even make it over the net. And I don't know about you, but I can think of at least a dozen moments where I felt exactly like Yamaguchi in this scene. Deflated, inferior, 
as though there's some barrier between him and everyone else. But as he walks off, devastated by what's happened, to the rest of the stadium is really not a big deal. It was just one point, a point that was just used to calm Karasno down a bit. The next point starts and it's already been forgotten, but to Yamaguchi that was everything. His whole self-worth, his confidence, he put his very soul into that serve and it didn't work out, so that's that right. Well, no, of course not. Yamaguchi seemed convinced that's the end of his volleyball chances, but Daichi shows why he's captain as he tells him, you'll get it next time, which seems to be a huge shock to Yamaguchi. I've always loved the way Haikyuu deals with failure and setback. It's always heartbreaking and painful, but it's never the end and nor does it ever end up as badly as you'd expect it to. You get way more chances than you realize. And Yamaguchi does get another chance in the rematch of Alba Josai in season two. But before that, he has a talk with his teacher that gives us an unforgettable line. Following their defeat earlier that day, when Shimada asks him, did you enjoy it? He responds with a flat, not really, before spilling all his frustrations out. And Shimada's response really stuck with me. To get the most out of sports, you have to be strong. It's not that you have to be the greatest in the world, but being too weak to do anything sucks. It's frustrating and we might not admit it, but none of us want to be the one ranked last. The moment Shimada got his first service ace and realized what he could do, his love of volleyball truly began. In a sentiment that really mirrors Tsukashima's journey, we just need one moment to change the way we see everything. Except, unlike Tsukushima, who struggled to see any meaning or point in striving to be better, Yamaguchi and Shimada were obsessed with wanting to reach the same level as those around them. And what I really love about Yamaguchi's story is it shows this whole idea of talent in such a realistic yet positive light. Sure, he doesn't have the same gifts as Hinata, Kageyama or Tsukushima. He doesn't really have that innate talent that could help him reach the level of someone like Ushiwaka. But if he practices and puts the work in, he'll be damned good at whatever he practices. I imagine he felt the same thing that I have many times, and maybe you have too, that something is wrong with us. That for one reason or another, we're just never going to get there, wherever there may be. That there's some invisible wall that just won't let us pass. But as Yamaguchi shows, sure, we're not all born the same, but we're not actually as different as we might think. Chances are, if you just keep doing the right things in spite of all those doubts, you will catch them. It's pretty incredible, really, just how much humans can improve at something when they keep at it. In Karasno's second attempt at qualifying for nationals, in the quarterfinals, they end up against a team we've never seen before, and Yamaguchi gets a chance to serve. He sends the ball up, and it hits the net, causing him to pallet. But the point still goes through. He's so needlessly harsh on himself saying, oh, it's a point, but who cares? I just got lucky and I'll miss the next one and I don't want to mess this up. Give yourself some credit, bro. The only person who thought that about his serve was Yamaguchi. Everyone else was excited by the point. He's the only one putting himself down for it. He's being way too hard on himself, seeing his successes as somehow inferior to everyone else's. And that's going to be a major point I'll come back to thanks to Tsukushima. But before that, Yamaguchi gets a second serve, and all those towers make him too scared to go for a jump floater. He just stands there and goes for the safe option, abandoning his whole journey, his very strength. Karasuno wins the point and, as a result, the set, but Kojukai is not happy. There's an idea that comes up in multiple character stories in Haikyuu that running away from something you really want because of a failure or two only makes it worse. Sure, you get to hide away from the pressure, from the embarrassment and frustration, but something much worse takes its place. Now, I actually don't think quitting is always a bad thing. You might be surprised to hear me say that, but sometimes something just isn't resourceful for you anymore. Not every member of Krasno plans to keep playing volleyball once they graduate, and that's not them quitting at all. It's just simply that they have other things they want to focus on in the future. But you know when you're giving up just because you're scared or you're not willing to put the work in. You know if you're stopping for good reasons or not. You can't fool yourself. And it's clear which one it was for Yamaguchi as well. And the frustration he felt felt far worse than even the worst serve would have. I still sometimes think back to things years ago 
where I chicken out because I was scared of failing. Yeah, I've never once regretted my actual failures. Nothing hurts more than running away. And I know this is a bit of a side tangent and you guys probably just want to get to the next match, but I do just want to mention this idea that Ukai kind of touches on. I'm sure we'd all agree that anyone who looks down at someone for trying to improve themselves isn't a nice person, especially someone who puts down someone who's still practicing and improving for making one mistake. That's really not the kind of person we'd want to deal with at all, right? And yet often we do that to ourselves. Yamaguchi certainly does here, even though never in a million years would he be that harsh to anyone else for one mistake? Something to think about. Anyway, moving on, Krasno wins the game, and it's finally time to take on Alba Josai again. As the long-awaited rematch begins, Yamaguchi watches on, as the two junior setters once again fight for control of the game. Krasno take the first set, and Hinta is initially a problem for Ikawa and his team. But with their new weapon Mad Dog on top of Ikawa's monstrous serves, Krasno is slowly being broken down and falling apart. With Hinata finally being shut down with seemingly no way out and the points piling up, Ukai is at a loss for a counter strategy, using his final timeout early. Everything Krasno has relied on up until now has been dismantled with no fix in sight, but even as the pressure and intensity mounts on the court, there's one man standing on the sidelines who's even more intense than any of them. Is that enough of seeing everyone around him get what he wants, except him? Please put me in the game. The score is 23-19. A four-point gap is hard enough to overcome, let alone with just two points remaining. Yet, yeah. Yamaguchi subs in relaxed and ready. He's not looking at the score. Karasno hypes him up, but he doesn't need it. He's been preparing for this moment for months. These eight seconds are all he needs. As Shimada says, just by having spoken to Ukai, this isn't the same Yamaguchi, and it really shows, even Oikawa notices it. And so the whistle finally blows, the stadium goes silent, and he takes a deep breath. This is his moment. <laughs> Karasno's half of the stadium erupts, whilst Alba Josai is confused by why one point deserves such celebration. But they didn't see the months of frustration, the late practices, the doubts, the despair, the desire to just feel adequate. And as Tsukishima says, and I love this part, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's practiced serving more than anyone. So why wouldn't he score a service ace? There was never anything wrong with Yamaguchi. There arguably wasn't anything special about what he did either. He just practiced and practiced. And again, why wouldn't someone who'd put in that much work have a great serve? That barrier, that curse, the way past it was simply time. Time spent wisely. And now, Albert Joso looking at his serves with the same fear Karasno have of Oikawa's. He's done it. He's proved himself completely wrong. And now Alba Josai supporters are proven even more wrong because it's not just one point. He gets another serve and gets a second point against a player he would have only been able to look at with envy months prior. Against six players he would have envied. A third point goes over thanks to Tsukushima and as Yamaguchi's fourth serve goes through, Karasuno tie up and his mental barriers shatter. Shimada sums it up perfectly. He's no longer worrying about getting it over. He's focusing on where he's aiming. And if Yamaguchi's story resonates with you, if you have this desperate desire to stop being so hopeless, that moment will come where you suddenly realize you don't have to try and scrape by for the bare minimum anymore. And soon enough, you'll forget you ever did. Yamaguchi's serves are eventually stopped, but this time, he walks off with his head held high, as he should. And what a beautiful story. So much of this I wish I could show my younger self because it's just packed full of so many real down-to-earth little gems. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. Thank you very much for watching. If you want more Haiku content, I'll put the playlist on your screen. Either way, hope you have a great day and see you again soon.